Hello everyone, this is Just a Dad. Today I'm gonna to take apart and try to fix the Keurig K Cafe model number K84. So I really like this Keurig. This is one of my favorite Keurigs. I bought this one off the internet. Uh, the description said it was not working. It said it was displaying an air code, but I can't see what air code it would display. So the water reservoir, the handles broke. It came without a milk frother, so I have one of these. Uh, I've been using it and it does seem like it's working. Now I've done another video, so sometimes these machines act like they're broke and they just get out of sequence or they need to let one side do its thing and then this. So I have run across, even on my brand new Keurig K-Cafe, is sometimes when you start the milk frother, the coffee side won't work until this is done. And then sometimes when you're doing a coffee or the shot, the frother kind of sits there and waits. You'll press the button and it doesn't start. But then after, the, after it warms up the water and does the coffee, then it will start automatically. So I think that's just a natural thing of this Keurig. I've had a lot of people ask me in my comments, hey, does your frother not work sometimes? But I think sometimes, then sometimes I can do the coffee and the frother at the same time and I never have any problems. But sometimes it does want to see the frother finish or the coffee finish before it does the other one. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to unplug it. I really wanted to take one of these apart. I want to see what's going on on the inside. So if you're tuning into this video because your add water light doesn't work, so up here it's got this add water light. If that light's not coming on, there's the vent for it. So inside here, when we take this apart, you'll see there's an add water light uh, box that's got two wires going to it. And as the water reservoir uh, has water in it, so does that box. That's the vent for it. So if that vent gets clogged, your add water light won't work properly. Okay, so it looks like we got one, two, three, four. So this is different. These look like stars. So they may not be wanting us to take this apart. So let's try this, taking this side apart first, and then we'll go over to the frother. Okay, so right away it separates. Uh, as soon as I took these two screws out here, the frother just sort of fell off. So that's, that's kind of nice. Okay, so it doesn't look like there's anything we can disconnect right away. So I just, there's a little hook here that these were in. I, get, I just undid that, took them out of that little hook. That gets us a little bit more room to work with. Okay, so I am gonna take this screw out right here. Okay, so I've been playing around with this. This top piece looks like it's gonna come off the easiest. You can undo one of the tabs right there. And then there's another tab right there, which you can get to from this side and it will pop off. Okay, so once that top piece, then I can just pull these, I can disconnect these right here. So I am gonna have to take out this little, this little piece right here, pops out, because there's a hose connected to it. So once I lift that up, this piece comes off really easy. So again, this top piece, then you can take these parts off and then it comes off the bottom. Okay, so first let me explain, this is the uh, add water sensor right here. So, Right here at the bottom of the water tank, water comes into the machine, it goes to the pump or it goes to the water sensor. It goes to both places as water is in the tank. So with the add water sensor, as water is in the tank, it's gonna be at the same level in this pipe. So when your water in your tank goes down, it's gonna go down below these two wires and then your add water light will come on. But if this, is, if this vent is blocked, then the water won't be able to go up and down in this and it could show that your add water light is on all the time or it could show that you never have to add water, which is bad because you could run your machine dry. So make sure that is nice and clean. So it looks like we got a big tank that holds the water. You can see the water gushing in there. So water does stay in the machine. Around back, we've got the control card. Here's where the connection for the frother is, right there. And these are some, these are, these are splices, or these are all spliced together for the frother. Okay, so it looks like the water pump is right here. That's the water pump. So the water comes in from the tank, it comes out this pipe, it goes into the bottom of the heating element, of the, of the tank. And then the heating element is right here for the, for the, heat, for the tank. There's a little better view. So the water pump fills the water tank up. Now when you do a Keurig, 
the, the, when you do a K-cup, the hot water is going to come out the top of the tank and go into this tube, which is going to go into the K-cup. But we do have a, an air pump. So right here is the air pump, and it, towards the end of the brew, it kicks on, and it dumps air into the line to clean out the line, to clean out what's just in the top of the tank. So you'll hear a gush of air come through the line and through your K-cup. Now, this would be really hard to come apart through in here, I think. Okay, so here I've got a water tank that was inside a Keurig K-Mini. So here's what these look like. So there's kind of like this really hard uh, plastic at the top, but the bottom is metal, and that's where the heating element is. So when we descale a Keurig, this is the part we're descaling, because you'll get mineral buildup in there, because this is aluminum, and so uh, hard water deposits will form on there, and your heating element won't work as good. And that's exactly what we've got here with this aluminum tank and then this hard top at the bottom. So it's a little different design, a little bit bigger, but it's the same principle. So that was a little tricky to come apart, but I think I can get it back together relatively easy. And it did come apart. There, The K-Elite, I had a heck of a time uh, getting it apart, and I don't think I'll get it back together. So if you've got a water leak, I, I do see where some of these tubes could come off. You could put these tubes back on and maybe put a zip tie around them. I don't see anything that you can reset. Um, if your control board goes bad, it looks like it, you're, you know, you'll probably have to replace the whole machine. You could, theoretically, looks like you could change out a water pump, but I don't know where you can buy those. And so the thermostat is that red wire right there. And it kind of wraps to the side of that tank. Um, I don't know that you can change it. You definitely can't reset it. Okay, so I've really been anxious to see what the frother side looks like. They really don't want you taking this apart. It looks like a star screw. So it takes a T10. Okay, so when you take those screws out, the bottom comes off. So the frother has a huge circuit card in it. That's a lot. There's a lot going on there with that frother. I would not have thought that. So there's two Phillips screws here I'm going to take out. So that does not get us very much. They, they really don't want you to get inside the frother. It looks like a great big coil that makes that thing spin. You can see it in there. So there's like a great big coil. That's what causes the magnetism to spin. But they really, there's nothing that you can really do on this frother side. Yeah, it looks like the frother, it's just got a lot of electronics going on. So if your frother does stop, it's probably this circuit card. And it could be that maybe some water gets down here, you know, through there somehow or something. I could definitely see that happening. But no, there's really nothing meant to be worked on on the frother. I don't see a reset. You'd have to disconnect all these wires to just get the control card off. So I hope this video helps you fix your problem. Again, do not plug it in with the cover off. There's electricity right here. There's not a whole lot you can work on. I mean, you could definitely try to fix the add water light. If you had a hose off, you know, if your tank's leaking, you're probably just going to replace the unit. If the frother's not working, again, just going to have to replace the unit. So check out my other videos. I will be taking apart more Keurigs. I took a K-Supreme, K-Supreme Plus Smart, uh, the K-Select, the K-Duo. Again, a lot of those, you can't, there's really not a whole lot you can do to them. The K-Supreme uh, and the K-Supreme Plus Smart and the K-Supreme Plus, you can reset the thermostat, but these don't have thermostats that you can reset. So thanks everybody for watching.